So welcome to the talk on uh, using Scout to discover and visualize open data. Uh, if you're not familiar with Scout, you will be. For anyone who's brought your computers, great. Um, we'll be going through uh, like a guided tutorial on how to use Scout, how to find your data sets. Um, and then there'll be plenty of time at the end to ask questions and importantly, to gather feedback from everyone. Like a big part of Scout is that it's open source. Um, and we actively get feedback from people to add more features. So one of the some of the features you'll be seeing here are things that were actually requested in the last Open Data Week. So uh, anything you request here will probably, be, will probably added be added soon, soon. by me. I'm, by me, I'm, I'm who's the always one who's adding always those adding things. those so. things. So, um, um, so great. So to kick things to off, kick things off um, who, who am I and what am I part? part. So, so part of Data, data Clinic, Clinic for the team that builds Scout. Uh, data Clinic is a part of Two Sigma. Two Sigma is a financial sciences company and a tech company. Uh, data Clinic is their uh, tech for good, data for good initiative. Um, so as a tech company, you know, you can see here, it's a lot of engineers always trying to build innovative things and solve problems in creative ways. And kind of from that attitude, that mindset, they realize, hey, we have a lot of technical expertise, a lot of data expertise. What if we use that now towards open data and towards nonprofits and social impact? And so that's how the team Data Clinic got created. Um, it came out of, was born out of the employees themselves coming together and saying, hey, a team like this should exist. Something where we can donate our data science expertise and our time to work with nonprofit organizations. Um, that started like eight, eight, nine years ago, and it started as an experiment and it worked out so well that then the company decided to fully staff this team with full-time employees. So Patrick over here, he's on Data Clinic as a data scientist, and I'm on Data Clinic as a full-time full-stack engineer. Um, and so what, what we do is we partner with nonprofits, with government agencies, academic institutions to just build whatever will help them be most effective. Um, at the same time, we still source volunteers from the rest of the broader Two Sigma company. So whenever we're working with nonprofits, it's not just us working full time on that. We're also getting engineers and data scientists from throughout the company to partner with these organizations. And that's how we can build all of these kinds of things like what you'll be seeing right now. Uh, what we'll be working on Scout is 100% pro bono. We, uh, we, it's for free. You won't have to pay anything. Um, and we do it because it's it's just part of the team's mission and something that employees at the company have basically demanded of the company to devote time to. So our history with Open Data Week actually goes, goes pretty far back. We started in 2018. Um, with, what was the 2018 project? What was the 2018 presentation? That was before my time. Uh, data from the DOE and, and other places around bullying in schools. Nice. Yeah, and then from there, we end up building something on uh, sub analyzing subway crowds um, uh, to be able, during the time of COVID, to be able to know which subways are the ones you might want, might be too crowded or something and be less safe. safe. Um, um, in 2020, I believe, we built Scout, Scout, and that was the first time, first time that we got demoed at Open, open Data Week. Open data week. Um, uh, uh, event, and then last year, demoed Scout again, um, a whole expansion with hundreds of thousands more data sets. And, and this, this year, year, we've actually had two talks at Open Data Week. You have the one that you're all here. Thank you for attending this one on Scout. And uh, another tool last week that Kashuk actually built with a few of my coworkers called Trek on transit resilience and climate change. So anyone yeah, who didn't attend that one, look up the, the recording if you can at some point. Um, so um, basically, at Data Clinic, like I mentioned, we, we're huge open data fans. And so that's why we build Scout. So every time we work with nonprofits, um, we try and work with as much open data as possible. Um, and as we work with different nonprofits, we ended up finding that there's a lot, a lot of data sets and a lot of problems that are consistently coming up that are pretty common to, to solve. And so that's where we decide, hey, maybe we should build a reusable product, something that is generic that anyone can use. Like if we're seeing these problems constantly, other people will as well. And that was kind of the mindset of why Scout was created. We found that when working with some non nonprofits, it was difficult to find the data sets that, that we wanted. Um, and New York Open Data has an incredible portal to find this. And so I'll cover more of like why, despite that existing, we still wanted to build Scout. Um, 
But basically, we found that we were consistently having to find open data, and we needed some easier way to search for that. And so that's why we ended up building Scout. Um, so, next. So, so over, over, over 10 years. 10 years. Um, um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, man. Oh, man. That is that just completely. Is just completely... Over here, over here. Um, I have no, I have no idea which is the camera. <laughs> it's, it's not from this computer. Yeah. Well, well, oh, 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 there, there we go. go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Figure it out. Figure it out. All right. All right. Well, so good. People, people, people look at the presentation, presentation anyway. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I got it. No, I'll just keep it with me here. All right. Um, so over time, the New York Open Data Portal has collected um, a lot of information. They have about 3,493 data sets from 95 different agencies. Um, the data sets have been downloaded over 10 million times, and they have over 22 million page views. So it's actually an incredible, an incredible source of information. Um, and so we just wanted to, to make that easier for us to, to search through. Um, you know, with that many millions of data sets, how do you find the one that that is most relevant to to you? Um, and while we were searching for them, we found that there were a few common challenges. So some data sets, you know, among those twenty two million page views and millions and millions of downloads, some data sets actually have very low visibility. Some of them are just not getting viewed and not getting downloaded. Now it could be that they're just not as useful of data sets, but typically it's actually just that a visibility problem or recommendation problem. Some of these data sets are actually incredibly useful, but they're not being used or viewed by the people. Um, another thing that we found is that when searching for these data sets, they're usually organized by agency. You're, You're searching, searching for, for data, data sets, sets from um, the Department of Health. You might searching for data sets from the Department of Transportation, Department of Labor, and so on. Um, but what happens when you have um, something you're trying to research with cross-cutting cross concerns. What if you might want to look for the intersection of health with traffic collisions or the intersection of environmental health um, and transit or let's say restaurant quality and building quality? Like what if you're trying to look at these kind, this kind of information that might cut through a lot of different agencies? And that makes it very hard to find data sets that can join together when they're in different agencies. And we're going to be talking about that concept of joining together a lot. As lots of you here who have worked with data, data sets from different agencies or totally different places, can't, you can't really work together with them unless there's some common way of joining them. And so that's also what we'll be covering a lot in Scout of how to figure out if some data sets are joinable. So basically, the, and the last thing is that even when you find the data sets, there's no great way yet to group these data sets together and share them to people. So we wanted to also cover that aspect of data curation. Of like imagine you're a journalist and you just find five, six different data sets that are useful to you to be able to just create a collection of these data sets and send that link out in a tweet or to any people that, or in your article that you wrote so that people can just look at the collection of the six data sets that you referenced. So we saw this as a recommendation problem predominantly. So what we wanted to build was something as simple as you search for a specific data set, um, but Scout will take care of then finding other data sets that might be relevant. So it's trying to help you find the data set maybe that you wanted, but then also trying to recommend it kind of like in that Netflix way of, oh, you like this, so you might also like these other shows. So we're trying to do that same thing where you like this data set, here's some other topics that are related to that. Like if you search for restaurant inspections, there might be other data sets around building inspections that might be relevant. And so Scout is also trying to surface these things based off of thematic similarity. But then the other thing we're also trying to do is, um, as you'll see, we surface other relevant information as well. So it's not just showing the data set itself, um, but we also want to show you how other people are using that data set. So we're also collecting information from GitHub to be able to show you, hey, look at these other repositories that are using the data and look at how other people have, have used it. Um, Check out the next slide. But yeah, most of that is, is what's covered here, where a lot of it is about showing them how you can join these data sets together 
Um, once you find the data set being able to show you, hey, these two data sets have similar IDs, you might want to join them, thematic similarity, and then we'll cover also then how do you create a curated package of all of these things. So two years ago, we started building this for New York City, and in this workshop, we will be covering mostly New York City data. If anyone is curious about other states, we can also dive into that. Um, but we found, obviously, that there is way more data out there. Even though New York City has so much, we talked there 10 million data sets. What about the rest of the country or the rest of the world? So this scout is built on top of the Socrata API, which we can cover at, during the workshop what that means. But this API doesn't just work with New York's open data. It also works with open data portals across the US and actually across the world. They also are working in Australia and Canada and Europe. Um, and so once we built this for New York and we already have it working with their API, there's no reason why we can't also work with all these other open data portals. So Scout, as you'll see, now covers 129 open data portals across the US um, and with 125,000 data sets. And uh, there's 1.3 million columns of data being analyzed. So when I say columns, I don't mean that we're analyzing the data itself, but we're looking at the column metadata. That's how we tell you if how similar different data sets are. And you can also find data across agencies, across federal, state, county, and city level. So the way that, in short, the way it works, we can go into much more detail during the workshop. We have questions, but in short, I said we're using the Socrata metadata API. We are not analyzing the data itself. That would be way too much. And we don't have like Facebook levels of cloud infrastructure to analyze all of those billions of things. Um, so we're looking at the data set descriptions and we're looking at the data set columns, their metadata, the name of the, of the column, its data type. And that, those are the two main things that we're looking at to compare two data sets to tell you, are they on the same topic? Are they thematically similar? And are they joinable? Do these two columns have the same name and do they have IDs that might be matching and therefore they're good candidates to be joined? But now, as I said, we're also showing some new features. Um, last year from Open Data Week, one of the biggest requests was, I also just want to quickly view some of the data while I'm looking at it, while I'm looking at the data set. So in the past, you could only see the data set metadata where we would tell you about the data. Now there's a, we also built some, some simple features for some quick exploratory um, descriptive data analysis. So don't think you'll be going to Scout and doing your regressions and seeing how correlated things are, or looking at clustering on a map. You should still download the data set and do that. Um, but this is just to give you a cursory view of the data to be like, is this data, is this data set relevant to me or not? So having said all that, now we can jump into the demo. Um, so everybody um, who has a computer, which is 90%, great, wow, you all read the description. All right, um, you can feel free to go to scout.tsdataclinic.com. Right here, scout.tsdataclinic.com. Anyone needs me to repeat it? Just let me know. All right, if anyone hasn't opened it yet, uh, raise your hand just so I can wait. All right, excellent. Okay, so once you're in there, that's great. I'm going to switch that. So I'm going to be running it locally on my machine just so to make sure that everything will run more smoothly. Um, so once you're here, um, first things first, you can just see that it defaults to New York because that's where we're at. And you can see all of the just data sets in general. They're not really sorted in any particular way. Um, they're just randomly there. So if there's anything you're interested, you can always search for it. Um, but for now, let's um, just do a quick overview yet. We're not really doing anything. Let's look at what other features there are. You see there's a sidebar here with filters. We have the ability to, if you kind of already know in general what you might want, you can filter things by the departments, what kind of age, what agency this, might, this data might be a part of. If you have any interest in specific columns, you can do that. Like, let's say you know that you are going to want to do geospatial analysis. We don't care about data sets that don't have latitude longitude in that case. So you can select 
those these two and make sure that your searches and everything will only have data sets that have latitude and longitude if you select that. And uh, the data that comes from Socrat also has tags, like is this health data, is this environmental data? And so we have that in here as well. So you can always pick on these things if you wanted to look at things by category. And last thing I mentioned, we have data worldwide. Um, so even though this demo is just going to, this workshop will just be looking at New York data, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's move that. Can I move that? Oh, yeah. Great. No, there we go. Yeah. So on the top right, you see that you can select from uh, the specific portal to all portals. And that'll mean that all those filters and searches that I mentioned will now be looking at everything that we have in here. Um, so you'll see that the selection for New York has gone away. And now we have 126,000 data sets. And so you can search through all of those. Um, if you didn't want to do a global search, you can bring that oh man. Hold on. using two screens is hard right now. <laughs> there we go. Okay, there we go. You can select that again. And on the top left, if you didn't want to during this workshop, use New York and say your hometown is around, so you can search for it here. Now, we don't have every state and every city in the US. This is about what we could pull from Socrata. Um, but say if you wanted to do this workshop with Chicago data, you can. Um, everything, I'm, you know, this is not an incredibly advanced workshop. So just because you're not following along with my clicks exactly, you'll still be able to understand everything going on. Feel free to select Chicago or Cincinnati or Colorado, Colorado, and, Colorado and, and look at those. Look at those. So, so we'll be looking, we'll be looking at New York, at New right, York now. right now. Just to keep it just simple, let's say I'm curious, curious now, now about looking at restaurant, restaurant data. data. I want, I'm care about health inspections. So I can just type restaurant and search for that. And there we go, it shows up. Um, and we have nine data sets that match with restaurant. Also, as you all know, sorry, should I cover this? Um, none of you had to log in to do this. This is 100% available um, without authentication. If you are someone that works on multiple computers or you travel or whatever, and you do want to make sure you do want to be able to uh, save, save these data, these sets, data for sets for later. You will, you will want to, in that case, that case, create an account create an by clicking account, sign in. Sign in. Um, um, and that, that way, when, when, when we cover this, when you save, save your data sets, sets your collection, you'll have, you have access to it on, on you know, any, any computer, computer you're at. You're at. But, but for now, you don't have to. Working with it without authenticating is totally And that's kind of the thing that data clinic, everything we do is always with that intention that you never have to register. Also, we don't care about your data. We don't need you to register. We don't need you to authenticate or nothing. You can just work with it on its own. So we search for the restaurant. And let's look at open restaurant inspections. And there's all these others over here. Let's say I also care about, at some point, calling this on a map. So I don't know which of these are going to have latitude and longitude. So let's. Filter that out. And now we're left of those nine, only four that have latitude longitude. So that's great. So that means that everything here that matches something related to restaurant, um, I know if I were to download this data set, it is going to be, I can put it on a map. That's great. Um, so let's look at open restaurant inspections. So here we are now at the data page, uh, the data set page, sorry. Um, like I said, it mostly focuses on metadata. So this is telling you about the data set. So again, as everyone, Scout is about finding the data sets you want. It's still going to be on you to analyze the data. Um, but this is now, let's learn about what is in this data set. So open restaurant inspections. On the left, you see a lot of information. How often this data set is updated, what agency it came from, when it was last updated, and when the metadata was updated. So even if the data may have been up, last time was updated in... December 29th, we see that its metadata was actually updated a lot more recently, like metadata meaning maybe a column name was changed, maybe a title or a description was changed. Actually, that's just today, so that's great. There you go. Um, and you also see page views, how often um, this has been seen. Uh, so page views might be relevant because it can tell you a lot of people are looking at this, so it might actually be a useful data set to look at. Note that that's not always the case. Like we mentioned, some data sets don't have many views, but might still be incredibly useful. So I like this. So let's click on Add to Collection. Um, 
Let's see. All right, you want to over here? Yeah, that's working. All right, it's not working there. It's over here. Let's try it again. Back. Restaurant. Okay. So if you have a collection, if you haven't created one, click Create Collection. Um, also, if you click to there, if you didn't have a collection, there should already be a button that says Create Collection. So you can go ahead and create that. So let's say Create Collection. I'm just going to call this um, School of Data Demo. Demo at School of Data. And let's create. All right, so I have my collection there. Uh, and I'm going to just go ahead and add it to that one. And now you see it's in one collection. We'll cover the collections part soon. Um, okay, yeah, it's working. Not sure why it wasn't working over here. That's still spinning. All right, well, whatever is working. Has everyone been able to create a collection and add it there? Yeah, all right, great. So I guess it's just my computer. Okay. So we have a school of the data demo here. I added it to that collection. Um, we'll see pretty soon what that's like, but I already know that this seems pretty relevant to me, so I'm gonna keep that. Let's see what else might be relevant. So we have all of the columns here. Um, and let's see what else <coughs> there is. Uh, let's, BBL uh, might be relevant. So, I uh, know these things. Okay, there we go. So if you were to click on the columns, you'll be able to see any matching data sets that there are. Um, and we automatically look at the percentage of IDs that are matching. So we're telling you, for example, this column BBL, which if anyone has an analyzed New York data before BBL stands for plural, block, and locked. So it's basically a location identifier for this thing. This can tell you any other data sets and the percentage of IDs that are matching. matching for that data set. Um, so this one is pretty good. There's another data set here on inspection results. Um, I moved over to like page three. If anyone's looking at their own data sets or whatever, you can just click on anything here. Um, so I just browsed around and found that New York City restaurant inspection results, there's 45% IDs matching. That's great to know because considering that these are two data sets on restaurant inspections, I would want there to be a large amount of IDs that are matching. So I like that as well. So actually, let's click view and let's go look at that data set. So going from these column explorations, you can always click on view and look at any other data set that is over there and jump over to it and see what they what they might have. So now we just jumped from one of these to the other. That's still there. Uh, let's go to now thematic similarity. So this is another way now to see how similar some data sets are. And so this one is a bit of a slower query. Um, so but this one is analyzing all data sets in New York and telling you how similar they are, but now in terms of their description. So while we were looking at potential join columns, that was looking at how similar things are based off of their column name and how many IDs were matching between them. Now we're looking at how similar things are based off of their description. So in this case, we have, yep. Can you, um, you can't, but that is a great feature request that now I will add. So yeah, thank you. Um, do I have any notes here? I'm taking notes. Great. All right. Make mathematically similar data searchable. So a big part of this, if anyone has other feature requests, let me know. Because again, I'm the one building this. So if you have anything you want built, I'm just going to do it. Um, so you, you can, can search, search for this. We will be able to search for this. Thank you. Um, but now we have open restaurant inspections. Um, we have complaints received. So see how, in this case, complaints received. That has nothing to do with a restaurant inspection. But it might be relevant to us. It might actually be something, maybe we want to see a correlation between people complaining about a building and if a restaurant might have poor quality or the opposite. So from there, we can click on that. Let's go to department building complaints received. And now you can now see that one. It starts looking at it. So you see how this is kind of like going into that like Wikipedia rabbit hole when you click on an article and then you click on a link and you go to another one. 
And that's kind of what we're trying to do here. You start at one data set, jump to another, jump to another, and at any point you can go adding it to your collections. So let's, let's see. see. Where was I? I keep losing my, my tab. My tab. All right, let's, All right, let's say, say, let's just say I had to open our application, application and now I can, can add that, add that as, well. as well. So, so just, just added that to a collection, collection as well. As well. Um, and now, so that's thematic similarity. Now let's take a look at what it means to visualize some data. Let's go back to our first data set, open restaurant inspections. So for this piece, just for the workshop, because I want to make sure whatever we choose is going to be able to be part on a map, search for any data set, like restaurant or whatever you want, and go to the columns and filter by latitude and longitude. This is just to make sure that it can be put on a map just for this workshop's sake. This is not something you always have to do, but just to keep us on the same page. And then do any search you want. Again, I'm just choosing restaurant. Um, now we know that anything we chose here has a latitude and longitude. So we already covered joinable columns. We covered thematic similarity. Now let's visualize that. So I click visualize, um, give this a few seconds because some data sets are very big depending on the one you clicked on. So uh, this one took a few seconds or 73,000 rows. If you're an environmentalist and you searched for the trees census data and you're looking at trees census right now, that is going to take a while. That is 685,000 rows. Um, for now, we are limiting this visualization part to only showing you the first 100,000 rows. We will add, you know, on the back end, some ways to be able to stream the data so that you're, so that eventually you'll see all the rows, but instead of downloading it all in one go, it'll come in, in chunks. Um, but for now, just know there's that 100,000 row limit when you're looking at things here. But in general, that should be enough to just tell you if a data set is relevant. Again, just to remind you, Scout is about just finding data sets that you want to research with, not to do the research itself here. So we're looking at open restaurant inspections. And you get a table of all the data. Um, and uh, so you can see things here. Um, before anyone asks, is this searchable? It will be. So that is imminently on the roadmap to add this. So you give you a search barrier to be able to search for anything. In case there's a restaurant nearby to your place that you want to know if you should go eat there, you can just search for it here. Um, and then all of these columns, you can sort them. They have filters. So you can use that to be able to find things. Um, which actually means I should be able to do that here already. Let's see, yeah, there's spots on it. I love it. They're great. They're they're right around my corner. So, so you can see you can search for it. See, we're all learning together. That's great. So, so I can search for it here. They're, look at that. They've all been compliant. So I should just keep eating there. It's a great restaurant, by the way. But I know that they didn't ask me to do this. I'm just a fan. All right, so we can now switch to bar chart. So this is a very quick way to just get a histogram view of this. We're looking at open restaurant inspections. I just want to quickly see kind of like what's the distribution of my data. So like most of it, it, most of the inspections are in Manhattan. If there's other things I care about, you can also, you can just change on the x-axis what you're plotting. Um, let's say I want to see if things are roadway compliant. We can look at it here. Um, See that a huge proportion of them are compliant indeed. You can change the sorting function and you can change the amount of bars that you're looking at. Um, to protect people from crashing their browsers, if you were to choose something that has too many fields like restaurant name, you know, that's thousands of thousands of restaurant names, we limit the amount of bars to only a hundred. Um, ideally though, if you're trying to look at things on a bar chart, you shouldn't want more than a hundred bars. Um, but if there is feedback that you want to see thousands, let's talk about that. Um, and the last thing now is being able to switch to the map view. So I just want to see where these restaurants are. Um, and they're all plotted here. So not hugely complex map analysis. We're not showing you clustering or hotspots yet, yet. But you know, just a quick way to see where these where these data points are. Um, so this is all just more ways to verify, is this data set going to be useful to me? And if it is, add it to your collection. Um, for any of these visualizations, if there's, oh yeah, yes, please. Um, for now, yes. Um, for now, but one thing that will be added is just once we load all the data, 
figure out the distribution of the data points and then load the map according to like that bounding box of your data points. Um, for this workshop, since it was in your base, I've just simplified it to just load in New York City. So if right now you're looking at Chicago or somewhere else, zoom out on the map and then you're going to want to move to Chicago. Um, but soon, so like hopefully by next week, I'll just have this actually looking at the bounding box of your data points and it'll default the map to where, where your data is actually located. Um, and so now, so those are the basics here around mapping. So if, at the end of this, if anyone has feature requests that are useful to you when you're doing a cursory review of data, like a uh, common one is like for a map, you, would, you might want a heat map option here. Let me know so that we can take notes because we want to add all of those features for you. And then last bit is resources. So that's the last tab here. Um, basically, you have to log into GitHub, so you don't have to. But basically what the resources tab is doing is this is where we're trying to give you uh, helpful, helpful resources, resources of how the data set is used. Um, so we automatically do a search on GitHub to see if there's any commits or any code that is already using that data set. So in this case, we couldn't find any commits that match this data set. So meaning there's just no commits that have mentioned this data set in its description. And the way we search for the data set is based off of its ID. And so that's not surprising because Usually people wouldn't mention the ID and the commit itself. So let's see if we want to look at code. You have to authenticate your GitHub because GitHub doesn't let you do a code search unless you're authenticated. It's That's part of their API. So I had already logged in. So when you do that, if you want, I'm not forcing anyone to have to authenticate. But if you do that, then this can do a code search. And it will look at any anywhere in GitHub that is public. It cannot look at private repos, but it will look at any public repo that is referencing this. So that's pretty cool because now I had no idea how I would work with this data. Now I can see what other people have done. So uh, let's look at this one. You can always just open the repository straight from there and it takes you straight to the repository. Let's say if I wanted to look at the actual file that was using it, your get inspection I can click on that. It'll take me straight to the file that's using this data set. And so you can use that to get an idea of how, you, how something has been worked with already. So if you're still someone that is new to data science or new to Python or anything like that, this is a good way to just see some code snippets that can help, help you work, work with that data, data. and how, how to load the data, data, how to pull it, what are the relevant column identifiers and, and so on. So this is there to help you. So we've covered the basics now of looking at a data set. So now we went to the last part is just the collections. You know, we were putting together collections during this time. So I see school of data demo is the one that I created here. Um, you can click there to see the data sets you have, but let's click on the word itself, school of data demo, or you could always go to collection and click my collections on the bottom right, and you see all the collections you have. And there's this one. So this is it's called the collections page. Um, it's just showing you the data set. So again, this is just part of having a curated set of data sets that you can refer back to, or that you can share with people. So I can click copy link if I want, and I can send this to anyone. So if I were to open a new tab and I just paste this link, it's gonna load. So this is an easy way to, if you're writing an article or a blog post or sending a tweet or just a message to a friend being like, hey, here's like all the data sets that are related to restaurant inspections or building quality or traffic accidents. Here you go. And you can just send that and even for yourself to refer back to so that you don't have to be having 12 different bookmarks. Um, um, one, one thing, thing that, that we want to add here is a visualization, is a visualization but, but now of all, all of those data sets. So that, that is also on the roadmap, roadmap to be able to add that. So we saw that you could visualize a single data set. set. Now, now that we have all these data sets, maybe we want, want to look at them together, together by actually looking them on a map or something like that. So with these collections, we know that these are joinable because that was the analysis we did when we looked at the join columns. We know that they're similar. So it would be nice to just be able to visualize them here. And so that is definitely going to be added. But now we have these data sets. And so now you can refer to them. You can share them. And of course, um, shout out to New York City Open Data. For all of these, we always recommend clicking View on Open Data. Because again, our goal is just to help you find the data sets. New York's Open Data Portal already has some very, very advanced visualization tools. And you can always then explore it in more detail there. 
So this is again just a reminder. So we're, not, we're not. We're just we're trying just to help trying you to pick, pick the data sets here. Data so so always check out their data, data portal and see how they're using it. And if you want to download the data itself, you can always do that from their portal they have to download the full data set as CSV or Excel or Excel or Excel. So you can always you can do always that there do by that just there, clicking just on any of these data sets you want to open data. And that is, and that is the data set page is always available here. If you want to open data, you can always go find that as well. So yeah, so that's the general, those are all the key features of Scout. So as a summary, it's being able to search for data sets, both in the city of your choice or globally through all data sets. Being, being able, able to, to filter, filter these data sets according, according to, to columns, columns or departments. departments. Being able to look at joinable columns, columns, seeing thematic similarity of data sets based off of their topics, do a quick visualization of all of the data that's available to you, and lastly, seeing how other people have used it. And all of these things can be aggregated into collections of your choice, which you can then use to share to any friends or any people that within your agency that you might be working with. So before I stop sharing, um, does anyone, so the, we're not at the whole questions part, but before I stop sharing, if, does anyone still need to see this uh, if you're still working on something? Okay, okay. Great, great. Actually, actually, I had to, had keep, to keep, sharing, keep sharing, but just but change just tab. Change tab. Uh, so, this again. All right. So that's it for the demo. So last thing now, we were talking a lot about visualizations that we wanted to add more features there. Um, to also get ahead of this, a common request we have is other data sources that we might want to pull. So just as a reminder, this is limited, limited to the Socrata API. Uh, Socrata works, works with a lot of, a lot government, of government institutions around the country around and the world to be able to the data through an open data API. So that's what we're working with here on the left side. What we would like you to do is also extend Scout to now be pulling in all the thousands of data sets from CCAN or Entry, for example. So you can also be looking at those in Scout. So, so if, if anybody, anybody here is really excited, excited about other open, open data, data, feel free to bring them up here or open an issue on GitHub and be like, I would love to see this this open data portal that's not available. We cannot, we can, we want to add those, to add those things. Um, and then um, other and then features other we want to add want to is, is giving the ability to community generated, generated resources. So, so as you saw when we were looking, we looking at joinability of columns, of columns, what we do is that we look at two data sets and we're like, are these column names similar? Or are these columns the, the same? same? And do and they, they have, have matching, matching IDs? IDs. And, that's and that's how we can tell you if these, these, these data sets are joinable. But, but the issue is that what happens when two data sets don't refer to their ID, do actually have matching IDs, but they're not referring to them in the same way. Like a common one, if you were to look at New York thing, if you wanted to join data sets based off of borough name, what if someone, one data set was saying Bronx and the other one was writing BX and QN for Queens and MH for Manhattan? That means they're not joinable anymore. But we want Scott to still surface that to you as something that is joinable. You just have to do a little data process. So what we want to add is the ability to have community-generated resources so that people can actually tag things as being like, what is the crosswalk of like BX means Bronx and MH means Manhattan. Um, and so we want to be able to add that so that people can contribute that information. And then we also want to expand the resources section, which was doing just the GitHub search. We want to be able to also search for articles. So that we just do a Google search, find articles that might be referencing this data set so that you can also see what research or what tutorials or what guidance about this data is already out there. So we want to add that as well. So if you want to get in touch and contribute, um, all we, right now is a great chance. Give all the feedback that you want, any feature requests or anything like that. Um, or you can open issues on GitHub. So. This is a very important because a lot of people, when they're thinking of open source, they think I'm just going to submit an issue and it's going to go into a black right. hole. No, this is literally my job. So if you open an issue, I will get an email about it directly and I will respond to you. Um, if it's a bug, I'm going to want to fix it. Um, you may have already found some bugs right now. So open issues, I'm going to fix them. Um, if you have feature requests, let me know. Um, so GitHub issues, 
other than right now, which is literally going to be the best way because we're right here and taking notes. But if you open a GitHub issue, that's the best way to ask for something in Scout or to talk or to mention that you found a bug. Um, you can always email us to provide feedback. We have here our email, data clinic at two sigma .com. Um, If you are a developer and you want to contribute, it's open source, so you can. Um, we have a very extensive readme that tells you how to set this up on your own machine and how to run it. And again, GitHub issues uh, or GitHub discussions, you can open a post there and be like, hey, I need help setting it up. We can always get on a call. I can help you set this up. And because we want people contributing and opening pull requests, um, nothing's going to a black hole. I will be reviewing those pull requests. So uh, if you want to contribute, let's talk and let's do that. Um, and like I mentioned initially, TS data, uh, data Clinic, we have other tool, open source tools that we build. So if you're curious about those, uh, you can check them out. The one that we demoed last week at Open Data Week was called Trek with a T R E C. So you can always go to trek.tsdataclinic.com and check out that tool. It's um, on transit resilience and climate change, it's identifying um, transit stations that are at elevated risk for climate disaster. So thank you everyone for your time. And uh, yeah, open opening now to any questions or feedback they might have. Oh, yeah. Sorry if you covered this. So I found a data set and it's got a lat long uh, column, but it's hidden in some parentheses that follow. Oh. So is there a way to get enough information to read that? Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I see what you mean. Yeah. That is definitely okay. So right now, no, but that is, we should put that as top priority to like add. So I see what you mean that some of the, so what we try and do right now is we don't need the columns to be exactly that attuned longitude. We have some flexibility. Um, I think we allow it to like one typo, but if it's, it's between parentheses, that's technically two typos, so it doesn't match anymore. Um, so yeah, there's smarter ways that we you know, need to try and automatically identify the columns that are latitude and longitude. Um, so we'll add that. But then the other that I was talking to Kaushik, that we didn't have time to have this on time for today, but that it is on my to-do list for well, that, that is just, just if we, we couldn't could identify a latitude and longitude, we want to give you the drop downs to just be like, tell us which is the lat long. So you can just select this is the latitude column, this is the longitude one. So that one is is also one that we want to add. Um, when I say want to add, it means like they're probably only going to be there within a month. So, you know, just stay up to date on our GitHub, actually. If you just go to, you can search for a scout on GitHub, uh, you'll see it there. I'll put up the roadmap of the features we want to add. Um, but basically, one way to keep up to date is you can always watch this and whenever there's a new release, um, so I'll be making a new release tonight actually with all of the new UI updates I just did for this demo. So you'll be seeing that in releases. So you're gonna see version 0.3.0 coming out on Monday, actually it's the weekend, I'm not gonna do that yet. But you'll see it on Monday and you'll see version 0.3.0. Um, so you can always keep in uh, so keep um, up to date with Scout there. So every time I make a new release with bug fixes, I will be putting it there and it will be there like map. You can now select latitude and longitude columns. So that's how you'll be able to see it. So you can always click there and see what's changed. And so if you watch this, like add yourself to the watchers, you'll get an email about that automatically. We'll never spam you with emails. Like this is just through GitHub. So we don't have your email. So uh, it'll just let you know when there's a new release with new bug fixes or features. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, that is, thank you. that is one of our top requests. Um, that is something that we want to add. It is going to be a lot harder because of the fact that some data sets are huge and figuring out how to download these data sets and be able to join them and then still surface it to you. So it's something that we still have to still down and work out how exactly that, that would work. So right now the answer is no, you can't literally do the joining right now on Scout. Um, this is about surfacing the ones that are joinable. So you'd have to download them and then do that yourself on R in R or Python or whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, but for now, unfortunately not, but it is something that we're, we want to still try to figure out how, what is the best way to do that? Because it's easy when we're talking about thousands of rows, but like I said, like the tree census database, 680,000 rows, how are we going to join that for you? And like, we want to figure that out because 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 yeah, Scout isn't running on like some Apache Spark cluster that we can do all of that magic in the back end.
there um, capability to find consecutive possibility. So I'm looking at what the do for the points of the game. Are there any possibilities? Yeah, so that is entirely dependent on, I guess, if those specific data sets are available here. Um, like what? Well, what are you saying to us? Local law 84. Law 84? Local law. Local law. Local law. Local law. 84. I like your choice of data set. I'm working on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see. Okay. All right. So, yeah, if it's available for every year, then yes, you should be able to find them here and create a collection and add all of them to that collection. Um, one thing that I want to prove is the searchability of this. So, for example, if there are things that are from successive years, it would be great to be able to surface them a bit in a more combined manner. Like here we have the 2019 one, but then we have another result and then 2018 showing up afterwards. And if there are multiple years, we're not there further down. So we want to be able to improve the search still. So search works, but Kaushik has even had several feedback to is like, okay, we got to improve search still because sometimes when I'm searching for things, it's not necessarily showing up where I expect it to be. So that is definitely a good feedback for us to do that. So um, in terms of your question itself of can you do it? Yes, provided the data sets for each year exist, they're going to be in here and you can find them. You can add them to the collections. Um, but it might involve some scrolling to do that because the search has to be improved to actually, you know, get the, make sure that all of those successive years are showing up together. Um, and then the other question is like, one thing that we want to add that would be actually very relevant to your thing is that once you have the collection, um, we want to let you be able to visualize the data of a whole collection. So while it won't be doing the joining for you, it'll basically, if it's a map, for example, you'll be able to have each data set as a separate layer. Um, if it's a bar chart, you'll be able to show like different data sets like stacked bars or anything like that. Um, so that's something we really want to add because like, we already have that visualization features for a data set itself. So that's on the road about to extend it for the whole collection. So you'll be able to do that, but it won't exactly be joining data sets yet. It's just kind of like overlaying data sets. For context, the thematic similarity uh, works on like word embeddings. Uh, and we built this, you know, three years ago. And the whole area and field of language processing and, and word embeddings has been revolutionized in the last like month, one year. Uh, so, you know, with like getting better word embeddings, better language models in the back end, uh, we might be able to improve the thematic similarity and like finding relevant similar data sets like much better now. Uh, it's something that we need to explore in terms of how we can use uh, some of these capabilities uh, in the start. Okay, yep. I was wondering uh, how many internal music this. Uh, internal, you mean for our company? That would be zero. So it says built a hundred percent for the public. Oh, all right. Kashik is an internal user. All right, he is our power user. No, all right, it's not zero. We have uh, Kashik. Um, we have other people that come to use it. But my point is, it's used for anybody else that you're saying that's using it's using it for their um for personal interests. So Kashik, who's on Data Clinic, so he uses it for actual work to find open data sets. But uh, the rest of the company, anyone using it is for their own personal interest. So basically our priorities are always the public because that is where 99% of our users are is from people here and people at nonprofits non and stuff, stuff like that. that. So, so I guess how do we balance priorities? priorities? It's, it's you're the priority. And, and that's why we're here that's collecting, why we're feedback, here collecting and feedback and taking notes of what features to add. Because just that in mind, here's how we're going to do yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel, yeah, I, feel <laughs> I feel very lucky. I, feel very lucky. So, uh, I guess uh, the hard, hard work was done actually, actually by employees before, employees before I even joined. Even joined. Um, um, like, like, like that's, that's kind of part, part of the history of data clinic. Started, started like eight, eight or nine, nine years, years ago. ago. It was employees themselves got together and advocated to have a team like this in the first place. So the reason it's called data clinic is coming back to the of legal clinics of lawyers working full time in tiresome jobs. Sometimes, once you be able to give back to the community and work with organizations that might not be able to afford their services, 
Um, and so that is something that employees at Two Sigma wanted to do to be able to work on data science and engineering projects for organizations that usually wouldn't be able to, to have those kinds of resources to build full scale applications. Um, and so they advocated for that, the team got created, and then it was actually such a good success within the company that people were finding a lot of meaning and feeling motivated by these projects that it became a full a full time team. So Kashi and I don't do anything else other than work on data planning. Um, and so part of kind of like our job within the company also is finding volunteers within the company that would want to contribute to these projects. So in a sense, that's kind of how to your question of how we're allowed to do this. There's this understanding that while we're building these open source products and we're working you know, helping nonprofits, um, we're still also giving back within the company by giving a chance for engineers and data scientists to volunteer on these things. And so they get to build up their skills working on different problems. They they get to feel well motivated, just the motivation of working on something different, something outside of your usual day job is just like such a breath of fresh air that then they can go back to their teams with like new skills that they've acquired, they're looking at different data, they are re-energized and like, it, so it's, it helps the company a lot. So that's kind of like how we're allowed to do this because it's, there's a good symbiotic relationship. It helps the company and then we get to build all this stuff for nonprofits and the general public. Amazing, thank you. Yep. Do you have any plans or even ability to upgrade the Um. Yeah, there are no ability for that right now. So there are plans. In one of the slides I mentioned, one thing that we're looking at is CCAN. That would be a, a good portal to add. Um, if there are ones that you find incredibly relevant or passionate about, open that as a GitHub issue. Um, because there's so much open it out there that like one big thing that we're trying to figure out is how do we prioritize these? Um, because right now a lot of the backend has been built specifically to work with Socrata. So we want to make this more generic to work so that it's easier to plug in new open data portals. Um, so if you already have ideas, open a GitHub issue and I can research those to figure out what's the best way to make this a bit more generic. Um, so the short answer is not right now. There are plans. I'm sorry if I missed this, but in the search, are there like little simple tools like grant uh quotes to things together? Um so oh that's yeah, no, right now no, oh, but actually so the search is built using Elasticsearch. So I could dig into more of its the Elasticsearch API and if they support that, then we can add that as well. But I'd have to look into that. But basically that's the I guess the short of it is we're using Elasticsearch, so whatever they can support, we can support as well. So I'll look at their API and see if that's if that's actually possible. Oh, yeah. Does this have any dictionary on it? Like, if I don't know what the, like, I don't know what the small summary is. Is there like a easy way to do that without yeah um no there isn't so that would be that's a great part of like what we had mentioned wanting to add community research crosswalks like adding a data dictionary would also be like giving the ability a user card resource, resource data dictionary would be great um um that would be that's a bit that's a bit would be a big feature that's a feature that's a big feature for like open data week 2024 i can demo like a data, data dictionary because like yeah that would, yeah, be, that would be a great, a great community generated resource if everybody can contribute these, these things. things um um specifically like all names or like understanding what each column contains or looking at sort of all the portals like which like portal is this or like where it is yeah i would love to talk because like you said about the ppl i think i don't know but also the portal because I don't know where most yeah. of them are. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I even. Yeah. Oh, you meant that. Sorry, I understood this as. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, for sure. I understood your question. Data dictionary for the, the column. column. But yeah, yeah, for these, um, on the wrong tab. For these, yeah, yeah, it would be good to to add what all of these portals are. Um, that has actually, yeah, internally when we got feedback from people, that was also a, some feedback there. Um, because another thing here is that you'll find some of these have the same name because like there, there might be multiple like Springfields or something like that. So we want to also categorize these like in geographic or like state, county and such so that it also makes a bit more sense in that with that. I think that's, yeah, it's a great one to add. Yeah. 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 Yeah.